Hello, everybody. I am Joe Murphy, founder of Vocalize AI, a product testing lab focused on the voice experience, and also vice president of marketing at Sensory. I'm excited to welcome all of you to our webinar, Building Custom Language Models for the STM32 Using Sensory's VoiceUp. Before we get started, a few general housekeeping rules. All attendees will be muted during this webinar, but we do encourage your participation. So if you'd like to ask a question, please enter the question in the Q&A window. We have reserved about 15 minutes at the end for questions. Also, this webinar will be recorded and the link will be available for download. So today, Sensory will demonstrate how to create custom wake words, voice control command sets, and grammar-based language models using the Voice Hub online portal. Then ST will demonstrate how to integrate these models into the STM32 development board. Without further delay, let's meet the panelists, starting with Jeff at Sensory. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks, Joe. Uh, this is an exciting morning. I'm excited. I'm excited to show you Voice Hub and more to the point what we're doing with ST with the truly natural um, addition to this. Um, I'm vice president of sales for Sensory, also co-founder. And in my many years at Sensory, uh, this is a pretty exciting day. So uh, thank you for being with us today. And now Greg from ST. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's a, an, indeed an exciting morning where we get to show our close partnership with Sensory. My name is Greg Davis, so Senior Product Marketing for Microcontrollers and Microprocessors for ST North America, and I'm also uh, the Audio Specialist PME for the North America's region. And finally, Luca from ST. Hi, uh, Luca here. I'm an STM32 uh, FAE and audio expert for the US region. I'm based in Austin, Texas, and I look forward to show you how easy it is to integrate sensory voice recognition in the STM32 ecosystem. Okay, great. Looking forward to an informative session. Jeff, do you want to get us started? Absolutely. Um, let me uh, just uh, turn on my screen here. So as a, as a quick introduction to Sensory for those that, uh, that don't know us, um, we're, a, we're a privately held profitable company that's been focused on improving the, the user experience between the user and technology and products. Um, we've, we've been at this a, a number of years. We've got a lot of experience. We've helped hundreds of companies de de design and develop um, both speech and computer vision into products. Um, we're focused on, on everything that we're doing today is, is focused on running on the edge uh, with state-of-the-art uh, machine learning uh, technologies and techniques. Um, unlike some others in our industry, we've actually shipped into billions and billions of products worldwide. And that uh, rich experience we're bringing you today and then combining it with our new voice hub tool. And then of, of, of course, with our, our partner ST. Um, I put up here just a couple of the, uh, the larger customers that we've worked with. There's, there's literally hundreds of them. Um, and again, a lot of real world experience, which is uh, important. Um, well, I'm gonna introduce you to uh, two of our different uh, engines today, um, but quickly let me introduce you to, to three of the, the main engines that, that we have at Sensory. The first is our truly hands-free. This is our, our wake word and phrase recognition engine. Um, it's accurate. It's widely deployed, obviously, into, into billions of products. Wake word and multiple wake word and phrase spotted commands. Um, basically, we start with uh, either a custom wake word or we can go with one of the standard uh, wake words from Amazon, Google, Siri, et cetera. And we, we do both. And we, we support many of the, the internet giants today as well. Um, then we also, we also provide phrase spotted commands. So phrase spotted commands will have the feeling of a natural language engine, even though it doesn't because they're just spotting. And we have the, the ability to recognize a word, even if a word is said before it or after it, or there's, there's noise before it or after it. Um, we support multiple languages. Today, we support 24 languages that cover more than 40, 45 different markets and dialects. And so it's important as, as products grow uh, that the companies, you know, our customers can expand out into other languages and markets. And then obviously our focus has always been on high accuracy and noise. Um, my little picture up there of, of the guy talking to his watch, I've, I've got a smart watch that our Truly Hands Free runs in. And uh, I always like demonstrating that at CES when we can't attend CES, where I've got 10,000 people around me talking. It's very noisy. 
And I can just talk to it and hold my hand, my, my arm out in front of me and just talk to the, to the watch in a natural way and ask for things like, what's my heart rate? And how about my calories and step count? And it recognizes and people are always amazed at that. And that's really our truly hands-free uh, phrase spotting capabilities. Next is our truly natural. This is our, our large vocabulary recognizer with NLU. And NLU stands for natural language understanding. So basically taking what I say and saying and understanding, oh, this is really what I meant. Um, it's, it's highly optimized. We're using highly optimized neural networks and we create language models. And I'm gonna show you a demonstration of, of this today. Um, we're focused on domain specific tasks and you can have multiple domains, that's okay. But what we're not trying to do is create a, a general engine that competes with Google or Amazon or Siri in the cloud. Those guys do a nice job in the cloud with, with general assistance where I can ask it, you know, how tall is the Eiffel Tower and how far is Paris from Beijing? That's fine for, for those engines. What we're focused on is, is very specific tasks within a product. So if I've got an appliance like a microwave oven, we've got one that's gonna ship later this year. We're really good at recognizing I wanna cook three, three baked potatoes or cook my popcorn or set timers or times or how do I defrost you know, a, a, a two pound chicken, et cetera. And again, we're not interested or we don't care about what's the temperature in, in San Jose right now. So again, focusing on those, those domain specific tasks mean much higher accuracy and much, much higher task completion. And then again, everything we're doing is on device. So it's very private. It's, there's no cloud required. There's no hackability because you basically get the product, you install it or plug it in, or you just turn it on and you can start using it. There's no Wi-Fi connection. There's no, none of these complex uh, uh, requirements. And then again, the beauty of, of our Truly Natural is it provides natural language conversations. Our third product is called Truly Secure. This is our, our face and voice biometrics. We won't spend much time on this today, but, but basically we support both computer vision where I can turn on the front facing camera or a camera and I can see my face and it can recognize me. And, and right now that's being used by many banks around the world and, and in, in millions of mobile phones and also voice uh, speaker verification. We support both text dependent and text independent. So I can enroll a password or I can just simply start talking and it recognizes my voice. Again, all these technologies are language independent. So they work right out of the box, no problem. And then again, our focus is always on high accuracy and noise. So what are we gonna see today? Um, uh, first, I'm gonna introduce you to our, our, our voice hub with Truly Hands Free. We'll create some custom wake words. We'll create some custom command sets and those will be phrase spotted. Then I'm gonna turn it over to ST and Luke is gonna show us how, how to integrate those and run those on the ST demo boards. And then I'm gonna introduce you to our new Truly Natural, which is uh, new to VoiceHub, I should say, which is uh, now part of VoiceHub. And we're gonna create a, a demo or modify a demo where I can, I can speak very naturally to it. And uh, again, all of the above is running on ST boards. Uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Greg now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully everybody can see that. Are we full screen here on the presentation? Looks good, Greg. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm just going to run through a couple of slides. I'm only going to do about five minutes here. The goal is to not death by PowerPoint, but it is important to me uh, that we kind of frame what we're showing today and, and you know, our strat ST strategy for voice control. So, you know, ST is a $9.6 billion you know, mass market semiconductor company. Chief amongst those product lines is, is the STM32 uh, a product family, which is you know, Cortex-M and Cortex-A. So you know, we have the four different product categories for the STM32. We have over 1,800 uh, part numbers. Uh, we have the largest Cortex-M portfolio in full production of the globe with over 6 billion shipped. So, Kind of some of the main reasons, you know, for for S for someone to pick ST is is our supply chain and commitment to long life uh, products. So all of our STM 32s have a 10 year uh, life commitment uh, on production. So you design us in, we want to be a stable platform for you to uh, realize your products in a stable manner for years to come. A little bit of a slide. So this is kind of a performance slide. You know, I show this just because the voice solutions for us don't only map to the H7 on the right hand side of the screen here one of our higher performance parts, but also we've had sensory demos on our low power L4 series and, and uh, other F series for F4 series for years. So this is not new to us. 
uh, we're in many customer designs for many years with Century uh, and STM32. Kind of some of the reasons why to pick ST, I won't, I won't linger on the slide very long. We have many crowns for power consumption performance, uh, you know, world's largest Cortex M portfolio in full production. But lastly, you know, scalability is, is the goal of the STM32. You know, one single socket scale up or down for cost with flash and memory density. Um, we do have the a largest pin for pin compatible portfolio on the globe today, and that's unified with world's class ecosystem and tools and support around the world. So one single how 1800 parts, one single how unmatched portability on the globe. With respect to our strategy for, for voice, I want to show just an overall view of the, uh, a software architecture that we envisioned the way we were going to support voice and a couple of key components here. So chief at the top here is your application space. What we're doing to your product is adding voice capability to something that you're already doing. This is your product. So leaving resources enough, you know, to, for you to be able to what make, do what makes your product special is very much in our mind. It's at the top of our mind. So anything that we're giving you in terms of additional capabilities is just a value add to your platform. So we architected our voice solution to be scalable. We support cloud-based solutions and, and pure embedded edge solutions that we're showing you here today with Sensory with the same software architecture, the same components. So one thing I do wanna to touch upon is our, this block uh, that has this DSP concepts. So in partnership with DSP concepts, we offer a, a far field audio front end, uh, which, and I'm gonna go over those blocks a little bit. What, what we'll show today on the H7 has got very impressive performance in terms of recognition, but in a, in a very noise adverse, and we're gonna show a video that's gonna have the audio front end active in our MP1 series. And then we're also going to show the H7 microcontroller. This is the world's debut of, of truly natural running on a microcontroller in the H7. That does not use the DSP concept front end, but yet, but it, it's already ported, it already runs, it will sit alongside this, the sensory. Uh, you can use it, you cannot use it, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, we're very proud of that and we're, I'm gonna go over that in detail. So then, you know, lastly, all of the other components, you don't need an RTOS, you can run pure bare metal if you want. But lastly, I wanna say, if we have the world's largest scalable semiconductor, um, platform for microcontrollers, we need to support that with a software ecosystem that mirrors that, uh, that sensibilities. So a couple of points about you know, our voice services platform. So the audio front end is provided in partnership with DSP Concepts. They're a very close partner, world-renowned audio DSP uh, capability. Uh, the, the tuning tool, and I'll go over this quickly, is all of this is offered for free. For You run it in STM32, it's completely free of charge. No additional royalties, you can deploy it in production as long as it's running in STM32. Um, that front end is Amazon EBS certified as well. And then, you know, one of the things obviously we keep saying about here is, is you know, true, we've had truly hands-free customer wins across the globe for many years. And now we have truly natural the world's debut running in a microcontroller, which we're proud to have that uh, that seat in the H7. So a little bit more, this is uh, top two. So this is DSP Concepts branded audio front end. So the main goal of these are these processing blocks here, uh, acquire sound via MEMS microphones of which ST obviously is a world leader in MEMS microphone production as well. Um, and then provide the, all of the, pro the, the pre-processing blocks to deliver a pristine audio to the voice recognition engine. So all of these blocks are not black boxes. They are uh, boxes, uh, uh, DSP blocks that can be parameterized, that can be tuned. And lastly, you know, the tuning tool is a, a huge, uh, a huge benefit to these processing blocks. You need to have efficient tools that allows you to process that. So what we've done in our partnership with DSP Concepts is we offer Audio Weaver for STM32 so you can tune those blocks. Um, the far field performance on this platform is outstanding. I believe it's world leading um, with more than six meters of far field performance. So a couple of little details on the blocks. We're gonna provide these slides so you can go over them in detail later on. So if I'm moving fast, don't worry, we'll, we're gonna provide these to you. So again, lastly, free of charge inside every STM32. Okay, so when we get to the demo, again, we're gonna show two demos today. One is gonna be a video, which is gonna, which is, I'm gonna put a link. And when we get back to you after this, I'm gonna put a link where you can see the first demo 
that's in video. And then the live demo is going to be on the H7. But one thing I'm not going to be able to show you today in that demo, of the video is the setup to the, demo, the, the video, which really shows the impressive performance of the far field uh, front end. Um, and when we get to it, we'll kind of explain what it is. But when we go live, we're going to show the H7 truly natural running on the H7 and truly uh, hands free running on the H7. So two uh, MEMS microphones, those are our microphones connected to a standard discovery board. So we do have standard discovery boards that these voice solutions will run on. We're going to use one today, but we also have uh, some number of dedicated voice recognition platforms that have been announced there on our websites and in the additional resource page, which I'll show you next, will detail those, some of those for you. So one thing I should note um, lastly, and this is my second to last slide, is that 100% of the application runs in the, the STM32H7 with no external memories. So really this is a single chip device. Um, the performance that we've noted, the benefits and the system response that we get by having the memories uh, or having the application run in no external memories voice maps to an application that really has a lot of cache misses. So running from external memories, we've noted as much as a, a 40 to 60% uh, a, a performance hit by having to utilize external memories. So we definitely are a fan of single chip solutions, everything running inside a single STM32 H7, including the audio front end. And like I say, today's when we do the H7 demo, we're not gonna use the audio front end, but we could just as easily use it. We just don't have a noise adverse environment that uh, we have to use that, but we, as standard, we will release it. So low cost of bill of materials, high performance, single chip device. Lastly, we'll give you this uh, in, a present, in the, the presentation. So you can look at the, the voice board, the discovery board, uh, all the partner portal from here, you'll be able to uh, take a deeper look on STM32 website afterwards. And then this is a, one of the voice platforms. So with that, I will stop sharing and hand it back to Jeff. Cool, thanks Greg. So let's get into the voice hub. Um, for those who haven't uh, haven't seen our voice hub yet, um, I, I'm gonna do a couple of little uh, quick demos uh, right now. Uh, first, as you can see, I can I can define the project that I want. I deploy it onto a device to test it. And this can be, first I can test on the PC, then I can test on a mobile phone, and then I can actually test on the uh, on the ST uh, platform as well. Um, so I can start with, with a new project as an example. And you can see here, I can create a, a truly hands-free wake word. I can create a truly hands-free set of simple commands, or I can create now our truly natural large vocabulary grammar. So let's start with the wake word. So here I can uh, uh, I can just basically name the project whatever I want. So I'll call this sensory as an example. Then next I, I select the language that I want. And in Voice Hub today, we support all of these languages and we continue to add languages to the Voice Hub. I mentioned earlier that we support 24 languages in total. And as of right now, we have all of these supported within Voice Hub, which is which is really cool. And again, it's it's a total game changer for us. We have hundreds of companies that are already developing with this. And with this flexibility, it allows for development in different parts of the world. Um, so uh, I'll stick with US English. And then we can select the size that we want. Within Voice Hub, we can, we can create models that are as small as 80K byte, or we can go up to about, a, uh, about one megabyte. And again, it depends on the platform that you're running on. So for uh, ST board this morning, I'll choose our 147K byte model. You can see the output format's already selected at S for ST and we support a variety of platforms. And today we're, we're obviously focused on ST. Now, there's two different options for operating points. An operating point is basically a, a balance between false accept and false reject. A false accept is where I'm just talking and it says, oh, I think I heard the, the wake word. And a false reject is when I say the wake word and nothing happens. And so obviously the, the best performing wake word will have a nice balance between false accept and false reject. I typically tell people that it's not hard to create a wake word. I think just about anybody can today, but what's really hard is to create one that works really well. Our, our traditional approach is to hand tune these models where we gather data and we hand tune. Voice Hub uses a, a synthetic approach to data and allows us to do this without any data and without any linguist touching. And uh, so far the results that we're seeing are, are excellent. We actually have customers that are using Voice Hub for production products today. And it really depends on the, on, on the type of product that you're going to be developing. So, 
within within the the tool here, I can select a single point, which will build faster, or I can I, I can show all points. So I'll just start with single point. So then here, I basically just type in the wake words that I want. So hey, sensory, and hello, st. And you'll notice that I put a, a space between the s and the t, so that the recognizer knows it's st and not st. So I don't want hello st. I want hello st. Within the tool, over here on the side, there's a uh, a little speaker icon. We're using TTS to basically speak out what the recognizer thinks it should be hearing. And so you can, you, I can click on this. Hello, ST. And so I hear that saying, okay, yeah, hello, ST. It's not hello, st, as an example. So then when I'm all done, I, uh, I select the build button here. It usually takes about an hour to create a custom wake word. And the, the voice hub tool will actually send you a notice, send you an email saying your, your project's done. So you don't have to sit there and wait for it or watch it. And so in this case with two wake words, it's, it's probably an hour and a half or something like that. So rather than wait for that, here's the same set already built. And uh, you can see that I have different options now. I can download the set and I can also do some, some testing right on the PC. So if I start here, then I can just, I press the, the record audio button and I say, hey, sensory. And down here, you'll see that it recognized, yeah, that was right. Hello, ST. And again, these are these are wake words, so I can say things like, "Hey, sensory, this is really cool," and still recognized it, even though I had the other stuff after it. So this is kind of just used for a, a quick test. But then I can go, I can select the download option, and within download, there's two options now. Uh, option one is I can actually download the wake word. So if I if I select that. It's going to pop up a window saying, okay, here it is. Here's the name of your project, and I'll download that. And this is the file then that, that Luke is going to use and show you, okay, now how do I run this on the ST board? Because it's already formatted for ST. Or uh, using, using a mobile phone, today is Android, and uh, I just tested a, an, an iOS version yesterday, so we'll support iOS very quickly. So here's my phone, and uh, there's a little app in here, Voice Hub, and so I just hit um, scan QR code. So you can see my phone here is on. If I scan that QR code, that loads the demo now into my phone. So now I can just say, hello, sen oh, sorry, hey, sensory. Um, or I can say, hello, ST. And uh, you know, it's recognizing both of those. And again, it's, it's phrase spotted. So I can say things like, uh, this is really cool, hello, ST. Don't you think we should do more of these webinars? And uh, even though I said words before it and after it, it still spots it and pulls it out. Okay, so now let's go and create um, a couple of command sets. So I go up here and again, I can do a new project and I hit, I hit uh, simple commands. And then I, I, I basically pick my settings here again. So I name it, um, I can choose the wake word that I've already created. Uh, the language will stick with US English. Um, I'll stick with the 147K byte size. And then I just start en entering commands. Um, so I could do a simple IOT. Uh, demo here, garage door, um, bedroom lights, uh, kitchen lights, uh, let's see, outside lights, and uh, let's add another one here, security system. In this demo, I can, in Voice Hub with, with Truly Hands Free, I can create uh, 10, or sorry, 20 commands. I can create 10 wake words that run always on, always listening, or I can create 20 commands. So I can just keep entering these commands until I get to 20 in Voice Hub. And this is part of Truly Hands Free. Um, so once that's all set, again, I hit build and it will build that set. And then I'll get an email saying, all right, your set's done. So now the set's done here. Um, and you can see I've, I've already added the, the wake word to this one. Set's done. Now I, I, can, I can test here again, or I can just jump right to download. And then again with my uh, with my mobile phone here, I can scan that QR code, scan that, and uh, it'll load the demo into my mobile phone. And then I can just I can just start uh, testing it out. And uh, so here you can see that there's there's two wake words, and I've got these commands. So I can say, "Hey, sensory garage door," or I can say, "Hello, ST. I want to turn on the kitchen lights." And again, it has that natural feel to it because there's phrase spotted commands. So even though there's not actually an NLU engine running right now, 
it has that feeling because uh, you know with that phrase spotting capability so i still get the op that the, the user gets the option to speak in a normal way they don't have to say wake word command set in this really structured organized way no they can talk very normally they can say you know they can have the ums and the ahs and the whatever's before and after and it, and it doesn't affect things so now let's create one more recognition set uh so again same thing I'll, I'll type in the sets and just in the, in uh, just to save some time that's that's already been created here heart rate call my doctor so this is kind of a a medical uh, I, you know i could have this as kind of a, a wearable thing or a medical thing around the house where i want to keep track of my heart rate or i want to call my doctor call the kids confirm with the system that i took my pills uh, or help i've fallen as an example so again download and uh load this set into into my phone so here's my phone again this is so cool uh you know before voice hub we we, we had launched voice hub the end of october and before then none of this was possible it was not possible for us to create these projects like this so for those that are listening to this webinar you now have the ability to create very quick prototypes and <clears throat> and proof of concepts by by using this tool it's just it's just fantastic i just again with my history at sensory of more than 26 years we've never had anything like this before and it just really opens up the uh, the opportunities so now i've loaded this set in here and i can say uh <clears throat> hey st call my doctor oh it helps when i say the right wake word so uh, that was actually a nice demonstration um those are very similar uh but i didn't say the right i, I actually mixed the two uh, intros together so hey sensory call my doctor I um, actually didn't mean to do that, but it was a really nice demonstration. Hello, ST. I, I took my pills. And even with some little stuttering before it and, and whatnot, it still, it still recognizes very well. So again, this, this is all running on the Voice Hub, which runs on, on, online. And then I can quickly load it onto my Android phone for, for testing, or I can load it onto the ST board. So now let me turn this over to Luca, who's going to basically say, okay, now I've got this recognition set that's created with VoiceHub. How do I actually run this on a, on a real product or in, in, you know, in this case on the ST demo board? Thanks, Jeff. Now let sure. me share my screen. So uh, now that uh, we generated the two different trigger and two different set of commands, we can start the integration uh, of the trigger and commands inside an STM32 firmware. For the demo, we are going to use an STM32 H747 discovery. It mounts uh, an STM32 STM H747 that is a dual core, Cortex M7 plus Cortex M4. But for the demo, we are going to use only a single core, the Cortex M7. This, uh, the Cortex M7 here can run up to 480 megahertz with one megabyte of internal RAM and two megabytes of internal flash. This is the board with the link. And uh, the firmware is really simple. We simply have uh, four different steps. First, uh, the peripheral initialization. So the DFSDM peripheral, that is the one that we are using to acquire the digital MEMS microphone plus GPIO and DNA. The sensory library initialization. Then we need to start the microphone acquisition. And uh, for this part, I always suggest to use a DMA for audio application so that you have a peripheral that is taking care of the acquisition and you don't have like an interrupt for every sample that you are trying to acquire from your microphone. And then the last step is an infinite loop with uh, the sensory uh, processing. Basically, I collect a certain amount of audio, for example, 15 milliseconds in this project. And once I have this buffer, I simply pass it to the sensory library that we process it and return if there is a trigger detected, if there is a, a command detected, and which trigger or command was detected. So let's switch to the firmware. So I open this firmware in uh, IAR toolchain, but uh, we can do the same with uh, Kyle with a GCC toolchain like uh, STM32 Cube IE. At the beginning, we have uh, the peripheral initialization up to here. For this first step, uh, we can uh, do everything using STM32 CubeMX. So in theory, we can generate this project up to this point 
using stm 32 cube mx this is the first step then we need to initialize the sensory library this is the initialization part so we're going to tell that we want to use both three different commands and then we are going to pass a pointer to the trigger and a pointer to the first set of commands and to the second set of commands. Basically, these uh, pointers are pointing to the uh, files that have been generated by Jeff using uh, VoiceUp. Once done, we simply call the initialization and then we move to the third step that is uh, uh, start the microphone acquisition. As I said before, we use a DMA to start the acquisition and we put everything in this buffer and then we move to the last point that is an infinite loop. Here we simply wait for when the data is ready. Once we have 15 milliseconds of data in this case, we simply call this function that uh, will process the 15 milliseconds of data and we return some values depending if the trigger has been detected. I, I simply implement a small state machine. Here is the if uh, when the trigger is detected and then I can discriminate between the first trigger or the second one. And here is the other section with the command. When the command is detected, I can detect which index was uh, the command assigned to. And in this way, I can understand what was the command detected. Now, let me stop sharing and switch uh, camera so I can show you directly the board. Here, you should see my board now. I have uh, the STM32H747 discovery that has been already programmed with exactly the firmware that I showed you. And uh, we have uh, two different set of trigger plus two different set of commands. So I can play with them and say, okay, sensory security system that's been detected. And, or I can switch to the second trigger and use the other uh, commands saying, hello, ST, call my doctor. As you can see, it was really simple to take these triggering commands generated use, uh, using voice hub and integrate them into a firmware and everything is up and running on the STM32. Now let's get back to Jeff uh, with sensory voice hub for a large natural language vocabulary. Cool, thanks Luca. Um, so before I, I get back into voice hub, just, just a couple of comments, introducing truly natural on the STM 32 H seven. Again, as, as Greg mentioned, as we kick things off, um, this is, this is really cool. This is, this is natural language without an OS running on a microcontroller. So a couple of things that we're going to, we're going to see today. Um, first off, um, awesome, amazing, exciting, game changing. Uh, I just, I just can't express how excited we are about this. The, the demo that you're going to see is our truly natural large vocabulary running 100% on the H7 chip. Um, natural language grammar and NLU created with VoiceHub. Uh, this demo has more than 10,500 different phrases that can be spoken. So this is this. I mean, this is pretty significant. And then uh, again, the whole thing runs in about 523k bytes of RAM and 864k bytes of flash. Um, so anyway, let me uh, let me jump to uh, the demo here. So um, my last my, my last project is again creating truly natural, and so here um, I've already defined a, a, you know a project name here. I've selected the language, I've selected the wake word, I've selected the acoustic model size, so it's 147 k bytes, and um, and I've already got the uh, the output selected here for uh, for low memory. So again, because we want to run this on the H7. Um, I should go back and say that on each page, there's a learn more. And if I click this button, it'll kind of walk you through the voice hub and, and you know, do this first, do this next, do this, do this, do this. And so that's kind of a, a built-in interactive tutorial. Um, you can also see that we've added an out of vocabulary rejection slider. So um, right now I have it set at, at 0.1 um, and I can slide this to be less rejecting or more rejecting. So as you're building these, these, uh, these projects, you can, you can, you can control or set the uh, 
the responsiveness. Do I want it to respond to almost everything it hears or do I want it to be more selective? So then we've got kind of four main tabs here. The vocabulary tab is basically what, you're, what you think the person is going to say and how that grammar is going to be structured. Slots, I think the slots is kind of as buckets. These are all the different buckets of the, the, the different things that I want to say, and then I would fill those buckets up. And I'll go back to, to each of these in a minute. The grammar is basically what the tool creates as a, as a grammar written in the syntax of, of, you know, of our SDK. But Voice Hub allows a non-engineer and a non-speech and, and you know, basic sales guy like myself to, to create these things on my own, which is fantastic. And then the testing tab allows me to test recognition. So like I did in the last one where I can, I can, I can record a file and test it and make sure. Um, I can check coverage and you'll notice here that there's predefined slots that the coverage doesn't check yet. But basically I can just type in a phrase and I can see if that phrase is covered or not. And then again, build. So let's go back to, uh, to the vocabulary slot. Um, actually, I'll start with slots. Um, I like to kind of build from the bottom up. So slots are basically, this is a copy, copy machine demo. And so I, I've defined the different types of drinks or, or events. So I've got a cappuccino or I, I might want to clean the machine. I've got coffee, I've got drinks where I've, I've listed all the different drinks, um, espresso, hot chocolate, etc. And then I've defined a few other things like I want a, so this is kind of an intro. This is things that people might say. I want a, I want a, or give me a, I'll take a. And every time you see a question mark um, following a, a word, that means that the, the preceding word is optional. So somebody might say, I want, or I want a, and it allows that, that flexibility. These phrases here, I can type these in into tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. So unlike truly hands-free where my maximum is 20 phrases, here it could be hundreds of thousands of phrases. So again, this is very scalable. It's truly natural, it can be very small to run on an H7 as an example, or it can be much larger and run on a standard application processor with an OS. So I've defined those. I've also defined that I, I want to, and this is, uh, I, you know, I want to clean the machine or I'd like to clean the machine or I need to clean the machine as an example. Um, I also define modifiers. So as I'm ordering my drinks, I might want to say with sugar or sugar free or with, with whipped cream. And again, whipped is optional uh, with cream and sugar, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so once I'm done with all of my, uh, my slots, I go to my vocabulary tab um, and I start with, um, I start with intense and intense is basically tells the recognizer or the software, okay, this is something I need to keep track of. So I've got basically two intents. I, I might want to clean the machine or I might want to order a drink. And then I take, I've got all my slots that are already predefined uh, that I defined, sorry. Then there's also predefined slots. Um, and if I expand this to open, <clears throat> this is really cool. So if you wanted to, to you know, have a temperature setting for your, for your product as an example, well, rather than writing your own grammar, we already did it for you. So I just click on temperature and I've got temperature for oven, Celsius, Fahrenheit, or thermostat, Celsius or Fahrenheit. So these are already created. And as I point to it, you can see on the screen, it, it shows examples, okay? Uh, this one's going to have, you know, uh, you know, I could say, you know, 350 degrees as an example. It's already built in there. Um, so these, these predefined slots really speed the development. So you can see there's there's all sorts of different options here, and everything in blue means that there's there's uh, you know different things underneath them as an example. So command sets, I've got alarms and car control and clock and door and phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll minimize those, but I define my own slots here. So then what I do with with in the vocabulary tab is I basically drag down my intent, and this is all drag and drop. So if I wanted to do another drink order intent, I just drag it down here, no problem. Um, so drag these down and uh, then I basically can drag and drop the slot. So the first thing I do is I, I drag down, I want a, and remember that that's, that's give me a, I'd like a, how about a, I'll take a, et cetera, et cetera. Then I put the question mark because it's optional. Somebody may or may not say that. They might just say hot chocolate. And so that allows for the flexibility. Then I, I, I pulled in the drink. And again, remember I define drink as all the drinks. I've got juice, I got lattes, and then I put modifiers after every one of the drinks. So I can, I can modify it here, cappuccino, espresso, et cetera. So let me go back here again. So it's, I want a, and then that's questionable, a drink, which includes the modifier. Now I could have, instead of putting the modifier after every one of the drinks, I could have just drugged the modifier down here and put the modifier in this line as well. So it is really flexible. 
And then I put a please, some, some people might be more uh, polite than I am. Um, so, so there's my dream corner and then clean, I have the same thing. So I can, I can basically say, I wanna clean the machine. Now, looking at this, it's like, well, you know what? I, I probably wanna add a sizing because people order drinks in different sizes. So let's do that. So let's go to slots. We're gonna create a slot. And we're gonna call this slot uh, drink size, drink size. Okay. And so now with, within drink size, I can just say, well, let's see, I want uh, grande, I want um, large, uh, medium, uh, short, tall, using the Starbucks uh, terms there, um, small, tall, or I already have tall, um, vente, etc. So again, I can just keep typing these things in and uh, just hitting enter each time. So now those are all in there. So now I go back to my vocabulary tab and I say, okay, where do I want the size? I probably want drink size right in here between I want, uh, and that way I can now say I want a large uh, cappuccino as an example. And I might not say drink size. So I'll put the question mark in there. So now I have the option of saying the drink size or not saying the drink size, it's, it's totally flexible. So once I'm done with everything, <clears throat> I can build it and you can see here, it's defining, okay, here's the name, here's the language, here's the acoustic model size. So again, this is a really small acoustic model. And if you look at the number of phrases that you can speak here, because there's all sorts of different combinations of things. As I mentioned, um, uh, we did a phrase count. It's, 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 10, it's about 10,500 phrases. So now this is built. So I can download, same, same thing as uh, with the Truly Hands Free. So I can uh, pull up my phone here again. And now I'm gonna scan this QR code and load that in. So now uh, you can see I've got my wake word in there and it also shows me some example commands that I can say. So there's, there's all sorts of commands that I can say here. Um, and so I can say things like, um, hey ST, I'll take a grande hot chocolate with cream. And so here you can write, it's, it shows you everything that I said. So here's, here's what I said. And then the NLU pulls it out. Okay, it's a drink order. And the drink is a uh, hot chocolate. And you can see that it was uh, with the modifiers with cream as an example. Or, hey ST, give me a cappuccino with whipped cream. And remember when I created the grammar, I put the question mark after whip. So that made it optional. I can say it or not say it. Or, uh, hey ST, I'd like an Earl Grey tea. Hey ST, I'd like a Vente double espresso with cream and sugar. And I was rifling through that pretty quickly because I'm coming up on my uh, on my my time. Joe's going to tell me here in a minute that I'm taking too much time, but really exciting stuff. And so you can see here that it, again it recognized everything that I said. The NLU tells the software, okay, this was the drink that was ordered. This is the modifier that went with it. And you know the magic part of this is now all of this needs to run on an, on the STH7. On that, on that smaller processor. And, and for sure we can run on the, on the MP1, that, that's easy for this. And we can run much larger vocabularies on that one. But on the H7 where it's, it's lower power and, and more cost-effective, I still wanna have this natural language capability. We have that now with, uh, with VoiceUp. So let me turn it back over to uh, Luca for his demo. Thanks, Jeff. Share screen. So we're back to the same slide. Uh, because uh, even though uh, we are now integrating truly natural, the steps that we have to do in our firmware are exactly the same. That's really a big advantage. Uh, we're going to go through peripheral initialization, sensory library initialization, microphone acquisition, and then the same infinite loop. So here I open already the firmware. At the beginning, we have uh, the peripheral initialization. As I said before, we can do this uh, using STM32 CubeMX. The step number two is the sensory uh, library initialization. Now we are initializing the truly natural library. The only difference here in the initialization is that uh, uh, from VoiceHub, we are going to get uh, one file that will contain both the trigger plus all the different words that we can say in the demo and after that uh, we're going to start uh, the microphone acquisition uh, step number three 
and then we go back to our while loop uh, where we call the truly natural process and then we do a printf in our lcd of the uh, phrase that has been detected so let me stop sharing and point the camera to the board now i reprogram the board uh, with uh, the truly natural demo so now i can see uh, now i can say hello st coffee with cream or hello st give me an espresso now here we are supporting as jeff said more than 10000 different phrases and that's really pretty impressive if you think that we are running everything inside a single stm32 microcontroller with only embedded ram and embedded flash now let's get back to uh, joe that will show you a video of the coffee shop demo as a more finished looking ui that also integrates the audio front end still running on stm32 great stuff luca and I'm going to show here a video of a more polished user interface that ST developed using the Voice Hub. So this is a quick 90 second video and then we'll jump straight into questions. This truly natural coffee shop voice UI demo was built using Sensory's Voice Hub in just a matter of minutes and is running on an ST32 MP1 discovery board from ST Micro. It features two MEMS microphones for Farfield performance. Ambient noise is added to simulate a coffee shop experience and commands are being spoken from a distance of three meters. Let's begin. Hey barista, cafe americano sugar free. Cancel. Hey barista, cafe americano with sugar. Cancel. Hey, Barista. Cafe Americano with cream and sugar. Confirm. Okay, so that was a quick demo with a more polished UI. I'm now going to open up the Q&A session and we have lots of questions to answer guys. So let's get started. I'm gonna start in the chat window because a few people put questions in there. Uh, let me see here. In VoiceHub, would it be possible to train a model with more than 10 wake words or 20 commands? So for for truly hands-free, the limit is 10 wake words uh, right now. We actually, it's, it's, it's not a hard limit. We just kind of made that number up. As, as you add more wake words, you obviously increase the chance for false accepts. And the 20 number is also uh, a number that we just settled on. It, it actually could have been 20, 21 or 25, but the, the higher you go, the, the, you do start taking a hit in performance. And so those numbers were somewhat arbitrary, um, but that's what we settled on in voice up for truly hands free. Now you go to truly natural, absolutely. Type in hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands. Okay, and then I think this one's for voice up also. For unusual names as wake words, is there a phonetic entry to help recognition? Yeah, that's a super good question. Um, yeah, that's, uh, you can do that. So you phonetically spell, um, uh, the word, the way that you think it would be said. So as an example, the, the artist Chardet, um, you know, she spells her name, her name S-A-D-E. I would actually spell it as S-H-A-R-D-E as an example, or, you know, whatever. And then using the, the TTS button, you could hear what, you, what the recognizer thinks you're going to be saying. So from that perspective, you can type it in phonetically. It doesn't have to be a real word. Okay, great. And it looks like this one's for ST. Is the discovery demo board available currently? Yes. So that there was a little uh, there's a little error in that video. So the the cafe demo was built on our MP1 full eval board. That board is available. That's the standard eval board for the MP1. And the board that we showed for the H7 is our standard 
uh, is our standard H747i disco board. It's in the, gonna be in the references when we send you the PDF of the presentation, you'll be able to see that. But both are, are currently available through you know, all your catalog guys, DigiKey, Mauser, Arrow, Avnet, so on and so forth, future. Okay. And uh, Jeff, do I have to pay, sign NDA, et cetera, to use VoiceHub? You don't. So just go to our website. There's a landing page for VoiceHub there. You, uh, you just uh, enter your name and your, your contact information, and then you'll, you'll receive an access key um, from Sensory uh, that will be tied to your email. Um, we do require company emails, and uh, if that's a problem, then just contact, contact us directly and we can figure it out. Okay, thank you. And there is a question in here about the support for Polish language. So we do support, yeah, we do support Polish today. Um, we just haven't added it to the Voice Hub as yet. Okay, great. All right, this one's uh, a little bit uh, long. I would like to simple wake word recognition, which minimum STM32 microcontroller to reach my target? Uh, I, I understand that actually what they're trying to ask. So there, there is some other questions in here about, you know, how do we target how much performance we have left over. As we said earlier, you know, it, in, in order to do, you know, far field performance, how much footprint that's a configurable set of, of IP uh, DSP blocks. Then there's the, the, the engine, the process, the speech processing engine, and then there's everything you have left over. So to put a footprint on one individual thing, is not really that realistic. I will answer it anyways. It, it, this performance, we're using a portion that discovery board for the H747 is a dual core part. There's a 480 megahertz Cortex M7 and a 240 megahertz Cortex M4. We're not touching the M4 whatsoever, and we're only using a fraction of the of the M7. So we there's plenty of performance left over. But to recognize, we have demos for tr uh, sensories truly uh, truly hands free running in our L4 low power series, which is 120, oh, actually an 80 megahertz Cortex M4 in our L4 series. So uh, you don't need much performance. There's a balance to be struck between system resources, what else you wanna do in addition, but we have architected our system to be uh, a, a, an architecture that allows you to put in a cost, small cost footprint the ability to make just the processing front end to a pre-existing design or go all the way up and integrate everything with graphics and everything into one design. Okay, and this is a question about noise rejection. Say the application would be on an aircraft with loud but somewhat constant noise. Is there intelligence in the noise rejection to filter out very loud but constant noise? Absolutely. That would be, uh, you, can, we, you can get a hold of us after we provide our contact information. Um, and we can show you that. That's provided by the, the uh, DSP Concepts Adaptive Noise Canceller. And there's two, there's a static canceller and a, and a more adaptive, but yes, that um, some amazing things can happen. We're about to have some videos on, uh, on ST's website showing some extremely high performance, impressive noise cancellation. Okay. Yeah. And then can truly natural commands run on some other STM32 variants or only H7? No, can run on any STM32 where it'll fit with what you want to do. So the, the recognition engine, plus if you want the front end or not, and what else you want to do in your products. So it's not really linked to any you know, particular series. Okay. And then uh, Jeff, there's a question on, there's actually a couple questions on how does the solution handle accents? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So uh, each of our language models are built around um, uh, thousands of hours of speech. And so for the U.S. English uh, engine, as an example, it's built with a lot of different accents and dialects because there's a lot of different accents and dialects in the U.S. English market. Um, and same with the other languages. So the way it handles it is, is based on the, the, um, the acoustic models that we've built with, with all that data. Now, for even better performance, if we find an issue with the voice hub performance with, with accents, you know, more extreme accents, that's where we, we can hand tune and uh, collect some additional data, hand tune it uh, more specifically. So there's, there's both of those are options. Okay. And then how long does it take the voice hub site to build a large complex project with thousands of possible phrases? 
uh, for Truly Natural. So you saw in the video that I was doing, I actually built it because I changed that set. I added the, uh, the drink size to it. It took a couple of seconds. Um, that doesn't take as long. It, it takes longer to build the Truly Hands-Free uh, wake words and phrase spotted commands because of the nature of their always on, always listening. But as far as the Truly Natural goes, it builds very quickly. Okay, great. Hey, Joe. Yes. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions about will we share this project. ST will share this project. We'll have to work out the sensory component of that in terms of what we can release. But the, the reference project that we've shown here that Luca presented, we will make available to everybody. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And then I have a question here for ST. How much flash and RAM was the truly hands-free demo on H7 using? Luca, I'll let you. Yeah. Uh it really depends on the number of commands, the number of triggers, and uh, also the size that uh, you pick when you generate the command and the trigger on uh, uh, on Voice Hub. So you can go from uh, I don't know 80k uh, just for the grammar up to uh, we tested up to one megabyte inside the STM32. So there is a lot of variation that. Uh, depends on the trigger and the commands that you, you decide to run. OK, thank you, Luca. And then uh, I'm not sure who this one is for exactly. Will Truly Natural eventually run on M4F? Um, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, you know, our first, our first approach was let's start on the, on the H7 because it's, uh, it's, it's such a great chip from ST. But we have already started looking at the M4 as well. Um, we're, we're not running on that one as yet today, but uh, uh, we do believe it, it, it could be possible. Uh, can I chime in one thing with this, Joe? There, it, it, I'll try to make this quick. There may, there may not be a reason to go with M4. As time has gone on, the economies of scale are where a semiconductor companies like ST and our competitors the value proposition of smaller process geometries and what cores we map to those process geometries start to have movement on their own. So where M4 is out there in the past, it's, 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 it's you know, in the mainstream of our portfolio. The H7, if you may think of, hey, I don't need this 480 megahertz monster, I can go use this other series. Well, the newer series might be manufactured in a smaller process geometry and you may get more performance and the cost may be less. So don't, uh, it's very important that you kind of let the evolution of technology and Moore's law kind of is, is no longer applicable. What's leading here is, is economics. So I would say that, it, and you know, maybe even more interesting than the M4 is an M33, because that's really what's, you know, provides a little bit more DSP, you know, per clock cycle capability, more security, and it's manufactured in newer devices, which are smaller process geometry, which leads to lower cost. So a lot of words there, but hopefully everyone's following me that don't let the economics, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, look from a performance perspective. Well, I don't need that. I'll just go with this. Uh, let, let, get the benefit of the economics. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, at that, we are now one minute over. There's still a lot of questions coming in. So I'm going to commit that all questions will be answered. We'll reach out to the people who ask the questions directly. And I'm going to conclude this webinar now. Thank you so much to our panelists. Thank you to our attendees. Uh, the complete recording will be shared. Uh, you'll receive an email within two days with a link to the recording. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Sensory or ST directly. Thanks, everybody. Thank you Thank for you. joining. Thank you.